Hey, Susan, thanks for sending me your swim video for analysis. Um, the first few things I'm looking at is body balance and rotation. Um, before you want to start trying to implement any technique on the three main phases of the stroke, recovery, hand entry, catch and push, we need to work on your balance um, and rotation. So your body remains in alignment, meaning your ears, shoulders, hips, knees, and ankles remain in alignment when you're rotating and when you're breathing. So like many people, um, breathing and kicking is going to impact your balance and alignment. In your case, um, the breathing is really throwing you off. Um, your eyes, one reason you... One reason you shouldn't breathe so frequently is because that throws off your body alignment. And then because you're always looking to one side to breathe, you're not paying any attention to what's going on under the water. So your eyes should always be looking towards the bottom of the pool. You should, that's going to help keep your neck in align with your spine. Plus, it's going to allow you to, to focus on what's going on with your catch and push if you're focused on that black line. So right now, every time you breathe, and you breathe frequently, you're lifting your body. It's kind of collapsing. Your core is collapsing. You're forming like a banana-shaped um, body position. And you have that huge lift. You're dropping your arm. That's throwing the, the not only the alignment out, but the balance is out of alignment. So we need to nail that first. A uh, double pump drill is going to allow you to um, help um, let that arm stay there and then the kick on the side drill as well um, you need to start doing a lot of that and really just being mindful of what's going on because you can see when you breathe that arm is falling that elbow is collapsing and then when you turn your head back down to exhale your arm is already down here and you just missed out on a complete a complete propulsive force and you breathe every left right arm so you're constantly missing out on some propulsive force um, from that stroke um, that's pulling you through the water so let, let's focus on that first um, as far as like the flutter kick you should be kicking from your quad and hip flexor your toes should remain close together um, you don't want to split your kick up but the split kick is caused when you breathe that you're splitting your legs so you don't rotate on your back. So just doing kicking drills with the kickboard, not to, not to strengthen your legs necessarily to propel your body, but just to help you um, get a feel for the kick and the right muscle groups and um, how much a balance it provides for you. And then after the body alignment, the balance, the breathing, the kick is all a little bit more fine-tuned, then I'm going to have you work on like a thumb slide drill to work on that high elbow recovery, fingertips below the wrist, below the elbow, because that's going to set you up for a better hand entry, which ultimately is one of the main um, things that I like to work on is hand entry because that hand entry, um, when you enter fingertips below the wrist, below the elbow, sets you up for a catch fingertips below the wrist below the elbow and then a strong pull all the way past your hip and right now because that balance and body alignment is off you just have no power behind your pull because you're dropping your elbow and everything that I've already told you so just a quick summary lots of balance drills um, which are going to be a lot more kicking drills that again we don't need to work on your kick for propulsion we just need to work on your kick for balance and then once you're a little bit more comfortable with all that then we want to start incorporating the recovery drills, the hand entry drills, and then ultimately doing like a catch-up drill and an underwater doggy paddle drill so we can work on that underwater pull. So hopefully this helps get you back on the right track. If you have any questions, let me know, and I hope you make it a great day. Bye.